Even for a genius gun designer like Eugene Stoner, it's difficult to get around your own patents, but that's exactly what he did with the Armalite AR-18. The main difference is in how the gun uh, points and aims. Now, the design of the gun uh, being completely different from the, uh, the AR-15 M16. This gun looks more like an FNFAL where all the function of the gun is in a direct line with the line of sight of the shooter, which allows you to uh, keep better control of the gun under full automatic firing. And it proved to be of, of great uh, promise when fired on full automatic, it targets uh, at 100 yards away, the, uh, the round stayed level, stayed on target with very little rise uh, to the gun. Rather than having worrying about close tolerances of uh, a receiver, uh, the bolt ran on two rails that contained springs. And it's a very, very simple design. They're very accurate, and the fact that there is no contact between the receiver and the bolt uh, means essentially that uh, the gun is more robust under harsh conditions. The AR-18 represents a complete about-face in design philosophy uh, for Eugene Stoner, who incidentally did not design the AR-18, and he was quick to correct anyone who was under that impression. He designed its predecessor, the AR-16. The AR-18 was designed by Arthur Miller, who was then uh, chief engineer at Armalite uh, sometime after uh, Stoner left Armalite. Whereas Stoner's earlier designs, the philosophy was to produce a light rifle. Weight was the, was the, uh, the controlling consideration. Make it, make it light. With the AR-18 and Stoner's 16 earlier, the idea was to make it cheap and not to use his earlier inventions. The AR-18 is really mostly known throughout the world as the weapon of choice of the provisional IRA. It was known as the Widowmaker. And the rifle really never saw much use except in far-flung countries, Haiti, uh, Botswana, uh, a few small uses. And this was an outgrowth of the whole development system coming up with the AR-15, which later becomes the M-16. It more resembled World War, a late World War II German development than, a, uh, than a, 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 the kind of gun that Armalite had built its, its budding reputation on. Here was a gun that was made entirely out of steel and plastic furniture, uh, stampings welded on to uh, simple metal blocks, just the same way the Germans were, were, had gravitated in 1943, 44, and 45. The Army tested it, and one of the problems with it, it had a fairly high leak, uh, cyclic rate on full auto which was around 800 rounds uh, a minute. And with the magazine, which was a, also a proprietary design, it looks like a regular AR magazine, but it's quite different. Uh, the gun would outrun the capability of the magazine to feed. So it caused all sorts of problems. The, it is a design, however, that had great influence on other firearms. It had a short piston, which uh, essentially found itself in such firearms as the AUG. 
The gun had a couple of very interesting features. Number one, unlike the M16, it didn't have that big carrying handle on top. Uh, the AR-18 uh, had a simple flat dovetail plate welded onto the top of the receiver. The stock was already very straight line, and so it tends to resist any muzzle rise in full automatic. But the scope, when the scope was mounted on this dovetail, there was a very small, compact scope, and that went on and came off uh, simply by rotating a little lever on the front. And that uh, provided the potential, easy potential, of mounting an optical uh, sight on the gun, which did not require a whole different upper as it later did years, some years later on the M16. By 1967, the Army tested it for its uh, military potential, which was not the same thing as saying testing it for uh, use by the United States Army, or much less to replace the M16. They were gonna do anything of the sort. They grudgingly agreed to test the military potential of it. And even then, it was clear that when the United States Ordnance Corps embarked upon a, a program of developing military rifles. They viewed it as an organic whole. Every, that, the rifle, the ammunition, everything had to be developed to be uh, compatible with each other. Well, the Army had already been several years developing the M16 as a system. The AR-18 the AR never had the benefit of that. And Armalite was too small a company to afford it. So when the Army finally said, no, you're not ready, come, work on it for a couple of more years and come back, <laughs> that was the end of it. That was over. And from then on, it was a sporting rifle. Of course, the Armalite AR-18 is a selective fire rifle and thus an NFA item. But there are plenty of AR-180s out there. Anyhow, that's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to sign up right now. Go to AmericanRifeman.org. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you next week right here on American Rifleman Television.